The Simpsons Index, an online spreadsheet that is also a podcast. This is The Podcast. Coming to you from SideQuest Studios, this is The Simpsons Index, episode 242. Hello out there, I'm your host, Elliot J. O'Neill, and joining me here as always, except when he's not, is B.T. Calloway. Uh, hi, hi. And joining us all the way from beautiful Adelaide in South Australia is Sean Flow. 242, Jesus Christ. Yeah. 242, baby palindromic numeric. Man, well done. And for the first 220 episodes, we're reviewing three episodes at a time, but now we're not. We sort of caught up with the first 20 years, so we're just reviewing one episode at a time. They just don't make enough anymore. Yeah, make more Simpsons. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're renewed up to season 36 right now, which will bring them to 800 episodes. Oh, God damn. Like, when you told me that I was doing a season 33 episode, I was like, oh, one from the latest season. Then I popped onto Disney Plus. I'm like, what? Nope. No, it's not even the latest season. They're it's still going. It's not even the latest season. <laughs> not even. <laughs> as, as someone who seems to like be able to conjure numbers and facts out of fucking thin air. Do you know how many times I've been on this show? I don't know. So, Ooh, um, Ofty. Yeah, somewhere <laughs> around there. I'd say you'd be heading into uh, seven or eight. A yeah. little bit more than your fellow Rolltercasters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. There's my claim to fame. Hell yeah. 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 <laughs> nice. All right. Not as All many right. one good things appearances. I, I don't think you're a ten man yet. <laughs> uh, no, not quite. I, although Ellen has bested me in OGT now. She ah, now has right. taken oh, the yeah. reins. So now this is my time to shine. Where are we in OGT, Beach? Or like four? I'm like three. Yeah. <laughs> three or four. Although I do want to hit up Salt and see if he wants to cover uh, the new Resident Evil movie, which uh, as a Netflix yeah, one? Fi- something of an aficionado, uh, welcome to Raccoon City. I think it hits cinemas. Um, it's oh. garbage. <laughs> I bet. Oh, I'm thinking of the TV show. Mm. Oh, yeah, that existed, did it? Oh, yeah. My God. <laughs> Ah, oh, wild times. But anyway, hit us up, Pulse. I'm assuming you're listening. Yep. I keep meaning to, to message him, and I keep forgetting. Uh, <laughs> Which one? <laughs> yeah, yes. They are the Poles. You, you message one, you get both. <laughs> uh, but yes, we're here today to review an episode from the 33rd season. This is episode 10, A Maid Maggie. First released in December of 2021, it was directed by Timothy Bailey. Not the Australian weatherman. And written by Elizabeth Kiernan Averick. Have a rick at that. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, doing an established bit and then looking at you like we're about to do an established bit and seeing what I you know. come up with. This, you doing that bit is an established bit. Yes. It's fun to watch now that I have you both in like half the, of my computer screen here. We're, we're up yeah. close and personal now. Mm. Mm. And uh, yet, uh, the, in this episode, Fat Tony becomes Maggie's godfather and is having a little bit of an influence on her. Hey guys, what did we think? I why do you keep asking me on this show? This is my <laughs> I my problem is, is that as I know this is just going to be the tired and true response that I give every time mm. I come on here because I instantly groaned as soon as I read I saw the name of the episode because it just sounds like a new Simpsons episode and I read yeah. The synopsis for it, as in the little two sentencer that happens on Disney Plus, and I immediately was angry at you for not giving us the episode <laughs> that was two episodes later, which is about Marge and Homer going into the wilderness and trying to survive, and that sounds wow. like a good episode. It was that a good a episode. Good episode. <laughs> it, it sounded like a classic Simpsons kind of story. Like, we uh, <laughs> reviewed it uh, the other week with, uh, oh, you know, Diana Green. Uh, yeah, we reviewed mm. that with her. And you know what? A surprisingly good new era episode. Not that funny, yep. but a solid story. Yeah, yeah. that's what it sounded like I an episode. I recommend you that watch just, that on your own time. That just focused <laughs> on a, the story, which this mm. did. No, it's fine. It's fine. I didn't like this episode. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Getting ahead of the rankings. Yeah, eh? You, are, yeah, you whoa, asked whoa, whoa, me whoa. what I thought. <laughs> yeah, look, I had a same, similar reaction of like, is it me? Have I just seen so many now that everything is just kind of, eh? Or is it, are we just in this kind of beige era? Yeah, we had the golden uh, era, the silver age, and now we're in the beige. Yeah. It, it's also hard to like know what how you have to approach it do you because i i had that thought when i was watching the episode where i realized i do always come into these episodes 
predisposed to hating it. But I have to look at it and go, oh, I, I at least need to not try and look at yeah. it through the lens of classic Simpsons simply because that's just not what the show has been for 15, 20 years, right? Like, it's just yeah. that's not what the show is anymore. So, you can't approach it through that lens. Yeah, well, what the show is, like, because a lot of people keep talking like these later seasons are a turnaround, but, like, it just sort of feels like the, the episodes that are getting, like, attention on social media and whatever are mm. these, like, elaborate parody episodes, like, high concepts. Like, you might have seen uh, earlier in this season while you were scrolling through, there was a serious Flanders, which was, uh, mm. like, a big Fargo take. Right. So, what I'm actually more interested in is these other episodes that exist mm. between those big high concept and parody episodes, where, like, what is the show running on normal? And, yeah... <laughs> Without yeah, the yeah. bells and whistles of a parody, it really isn't holding much ground. There are no bells no. and whistles. It makes and no I noise. I guess they're kind of going for a mafia movie thing here a bit. A real hardcore kind of. Here's the funny thing about this episode that we're getting into is that I went to acting school in 2013. So, it's 10 years since I started acting school. I yeah. have a diploma, an advanced Ooh. diploma in acting. I have the Blu-rays of The Godfather Part 1 and Part 2 on my DVD shelf. However, not yeah. only are they unopened, I have <laughs> never watched The Godfather. Oh, so you didn't watch never. The Godfather Part 3 starring Joe Mantegna, who voices Fat Tony? Oh, that I have Isn't watched. I? No, I absolutely haven't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Godfather 1 and 2, and uh, with some friends' strong advice, I've never seen 3. Uh, but yeah, in my research, I found out, yeah, Joe Mantegna, voice of Fat Tony's in the yeah. third one. Well, there we go. Didn't know that. I have seen yeah. all three. I, I side with your other friends. Well, because when they made the joke in the episode that Fat Tony wasn't even aware of the Godfather movie, I'm like, this has got to be an inside thing. It has Joe, to be, yeah. Joe Mantegna had to be in at least one of yeah, them. Yeah, surely. It is just also weird when you talk about these high concept par parody episodes and just how how much of a drag they are to get through in these like later seasons. What's funny is when I think of a really good version of that, it's the Cape Fear. Mm. It's a Sideshow Bob episode. And it just feels a lot more effortless. Yeah. But maybe that is also because I... Well, because well, I hadn't seen Godfather either. And this still felt like what every new Simpsons episode just tends to feel like, which is like it's trying too much. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I forgot to circle round back to that. You haven't seen either the first two Godfathers? No. No, oh no, I know. God, we we kind of buried the lead there, but no. And I know I would love it, but I it's because everyone at acting school, especially my lecturers, were like, oh, if you don't see The Godfather, you're basically not an actor. And I'm like, well, I'll show you. <laughs> and now I don't act. So, I, you know, I who's I want to imagine, like, after you bought them, the JB Hi-Fi guy took off his mask and was like, your acting teacher underneath. And was like, yes, more money. <laughs> also, I love that you knew that I did get them from JB Hi-Fi because I fucking did. I mean, Where else you live you in Australia, dude. I don't know. Big W. <laughs> where I worked for five years. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. Hey, there you go. There's some Sean law <laughs> mm. and some Australian uh, retail store law. <laughs> yeah, we. I don't know what the W. Uh, Woolworths. That's what it stands for. Woolworths. Mm. Uh, so yeah, let's hook into this one. BT, we'll start with you for better or worse. What's a moment from this one that stands out to you? Well, I'd like to cordially invite everyone into Jordan. Corner. Hey, this is John Zendel Corner. Forget about it. Whatever. Yeah. yeah forget about it. Uh, so early on, there's this bit where Ma they're out at um, the overpriced world of Angelica Button, and uh, Marge is like, oh, I'm just going to call Grandpa at home. And then they do this little switchboard gag where she's calling on her cell, but it goes through like a switchboard. And she says, and I, act I, I went back and double checked. I got up the subtitles to make sure I wasn't misquoting this, but she says, Hello, Mabel. Can I have my dad? Grandpa is not Marge's dad. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So has she started calling him dad ever? No, never. No. Well, uh, I think like back in the old days, like there's some episodes where they like call Marge Mrs. Homer Simpson, and they're like, "Oh, that's a weird byproduct of the '80s, uh, yeah, the early '90s." Yeah, yeah. And even even in the '80s, that wasn't. But no, I mean, and I googled the term "Hello, Mabel, can I have my dad?" to see if that was a quote to something. Nothing came up. So, okay, what the hell? <laughs> Did mm. they just? not realize in the script that this isn't Marge's father or did no one in the recording booth be like nope this isn't you know logic like I don't want to be full I hope someone got fired for that blunder although clearly I am no I mean <laughs> while we're in the corner <laughs> while we're stuck in the corner together while we're in the corner I did notice two other inconsistencies as well where 
Fat Tony was like, ah, oh, homie, you haven't lived up to your end of the bargain. Now you must uh, come with me. And they go to church when they established yeah. earlier in the episode. Homer says, I'm there every Sunday sleeping through it or whatever. And it's like, yeah. they've established he does this. This isn't him not living up to the bargain. He, he already did this. And then yeah. later on, Marge is, like, taken Maggie away from Fat Tony and said, yeah, stay away from my daughter, don't come near her again. Mm. And then he goes into the bathroom, does the bit from The Godfather yeah. where reach behind the toilet to get the gun, but it turns out he grabs a diaper. Then he's diapering Maggie. A- again, inconsistencies. Like, Yeah, and I mean, so long as we're taking this staycation in the anal corner, uh, Johnny Tightlifts doesn't talk. No, no, he doesn't. He talks so much. And they it. even do the gag where they get him to not talk very much after they've made him talk more. Yeah. So yeah. they make him talk a lot, and then they do the gag where he says, you know, I don't want to do nothing. And then they have him, it's just, I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> yeah. The one character trait, it's in his yeah. name. <laughs> like, they couldn't get any other character to be like, ah, I think Fat Tony's going soft. Like, and then you have them throw, what do you think, Johnny Tight Lips? Eh, I ain't saying nothing. Exactly. You just did? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lex ah. and Louie are right there. They can carry that dialogue train. They don't need to fucking hand off to What's the thing? Johnny Tight Lips. I, I'm mostly pointing it out because it's not the first time we've yelled this at a microphone. Mm. They've done this before. They've brought the character back just to have him be the one that explains the plot. It's like, of all characters, <laughs> yeah. this is the bottom of the list. How about you, Sean? What from this episode stands out to you for better or worse or whatever? I have two questions that I need yes. you guys to answer because I know yes. you'll have the answer, but because I haven't watched Simpsons in a very long time, these baffled me. Number one, when did Barney start drinking again? Oh, when did that, that happen? <laughs> Honestly, that was like, I don't know, four, five seasons after he originally yeah. got sober. They turned really? that around. Yeah, relatively oh. quickly. Because I remember, obviously, the when he switches to coffee and he learns to yep. fly the helicopter. And like that was mm. like my last understanding of who Barney was. So, all right. That's good for me to know. Welcome back, Sean. Yeah. My second question is... At the beginning, or in like the first five, ten minutes when they're when they've just arrived with Fat Tony, they're at church, and then they have dinner with him. Either Patty or Selma is there, but not the other one. Why? Oh, uh, I think they did establish that Marge was like, Oh, we'll just make either Patty or Selma the godmother. And then Homer's yeah. like, uh, that'll hurt one, but I'd rather hurt both. Yeah, whatever. So I think they've just got ah. her there as the godmother. But yeah, the, oh, cool. she I doesn't even play notice. a part in the story is a bit odd because she could at least get a bit sideways about this. It's like, yeah, this guy's way too involved or something. Also, well, wasn't she married to Fat Tony in a Probably. previous episode? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, she was. Selma was. What? Yeah. That's actually a decent episode, The Real Housewives of Fat Tony, yeah, where Selma gets married and uh, to Fat Tony. Yeah, God, I almost forgot about that. I was just like, yeah, sure she did. Why not? But that- <laughs> I'm like, oh, actually, you know what? That episode's decent. I just thought I missed that maybe one of them had died. I was like, wow, amazing. <laughs> um well, good for me to know. Yeah. There you go. I'm learning It'd something It'd be a new. bold step for them to take. Uh, I mean, they certainly keep forgetting that fucking Selma's got a daughter anyway, but... Uh, yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she adopted a baby from China. Also... Oh, uh, yes. And yes, also yes, at yes. some point, Fat Tony has a son named Michael. It was in that episode that Metallica were in. Is this just sound... <laughs> how's this sounding to you, Sean? This, it, like... There will be a test I afterwards. love that we could lie to him and he would just have no... Oh, idea. I'll buy it. <laughs> who, who, who cares? Has, is Waylon Smithers still alive? What's going on there? <laughs> He's a cowboy now. Uh, two sons. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, what stands out to me? Uh, this was just a series of fucking lame-ass mobster jokes, and it's mm-hmm. just... I feel like the comedy in this episode is going, huh, get it, but she's a baby. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's fine, but it just hangs around a bit too long. Well, the weird thing about the plot is as well is that Fat Tony in his mob work is going softer, but he's also rubbing off on Maggie and she's doing mobster shit, even though yeah. he's meant to be, like, calming down on that. Again, just elements of this story yeah. that don't make sense when you start picking at it. Yeah. A weird conflict where if he's being too nice, why are all the mean elements rubbing off on Maggie? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and they like try and obviously you can see what they're going for in terms of the end, which is, oh, I can't influence Maggie too much. Otherwise, she'll go down the bad path and she needs to be the mm-hmm. pure one. But yeah, the, the way that she's delving into that doesn't quite make sense. Like, I guess you can make like a, a an argument that it's, you know, the small things like when she's being babysat by the others, but that's not made like a huge part of the story. So no. yeah, it doesn't really make sense. No, absolutely. Wackiness. Was this a particularly wacky episode of The Simpsons? Uh, wacky from a mobster point of view, yes. 
Got Aye. whacked. There. Oh. Sorry. Marge's hair is a wizard hat briefly. I did actually kind of enjoy that. I didn't mind the opening, actually, with the... Uh, Fuck, what was it called? The Overpriced, Overpriced World, world yeah. of Angelica Button. So they're doing like a parody of like Harry Potter World at Universal Studios sort of thing. I also loathed that more than the majority of the episode. I hated it so much. Oh, really? I, yeah. I, I, I wanted to turn the episode off right there. I just, <laughs> I, uh, it just the weird non sequiturs that are like real. Like, it, again, it's a parody without a reason for me. And it was like my biggest gripe. Uh, with Futurama is that when they did references without a reason, it didn't land. But when it kind mm. of like was able to weave itself throughout the episode and didn't feel just kind of like clickbaity and grabby, yeah. like it, it kind of got my attention. Yeah, um, you can tell the writer definitely went with their kids to this place and were, yeah, a bit peeved at the whole fucking exit through the gift yeah. shop nature of these sort of places. But yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, they just need to be out so Marge can call home and grandpa's and that blah, 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 blah. Bah. Even then, that's a long road to walk. It is. That said, I did like how there's a first aid pavilion and there's one row line that says magical and one line that says real and there's just a bunch of people in the magical line. Yeah. <laughs> I did like it did have my because I'm always looking out for the animators jokes uh, that they just kind of pop in there. And it did have my favorite one of my favorite lines that you could cite, which is just all meat cutes are intellectual property of this park. <laughs> and I thought that was really funny. I missed that. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, now that I look over my notes, yeah, the whole fucking sorting hat bit was dumb where there were the <sighs> people there from yeah. the rival house getting in a non fight with Homer. You're in Griffin Snore. You're the mortal enemy of Schnufflebuff. Uh, we're yeah. seasonal workers. We can do what we want. Uh. But, I mean, I did really like the whole cauldrons being like the teacups and Homer hits the yeah, emergency switch, which is, yeah, straight into the gift shop where the yeah. kids see all the yeah, shit all they all exits are the gift shop. Yeah. No, yeah. I fine. think the ones that are commenting more on just theme parks in general rather than having to be like weird kind of Harry Potter-esque parodies, like that's kind of fun. Yeah, I mean, the idea that Lisa specifically buys the slightly more expensive one that gives a wand to a child <laughs> in need, there's something like both very Lisa and very commercial criticism on that yeah so, well i mean I like you see that. it all the time especially in fucking supermarkets now where it's like would you like to round up your bill to donate to this charity and it's like you look into that and that's them offsetting their charitable obligations that from money that they would like donate rather than yeah caught from their customers so that's it's like yes bitch. fuck you pay your own charity obligations Woolworths. you can afford it like yeah well worth <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah this episode weirdly bastards. rails hard against the fucking big w right now doesn't yeah well, it? well i was gonna say what's your international audience like yeah we are <laughs> who do they hate uh walmart yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. Other, the other big w yeah walworth <laughs> is a different kind of company in this country yeah 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 <laughs> america has a walworth i think it's a pharmacy though mm. oh and they have a lowe's as well and it's not a like uh, clothing store. extra large store it's, oh yeah. man it's the best place to like you get some of those 10x jumpers that are just basically slankets oh they're fucking amazing <laughs> i'm sorry what word was that <laughs> slanket you know, a, a blanket with sleeves. I've I've never heard that. That's amazing. I love that word. Slanket. You've never seen the slanket on late night TV? I, I can't remember if that's the product name or if that's what 30 Rock called it. <laughs> I think it might be 30 Rock. That's yeah. a throwback. <laughs> Another show that I have never watched in my life. You're an actor and I- you haven't watched that? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that is just yeah. such actor bait, that show. No, I... I I will one day get off my back. <laughs> uh, uh, we're not going to pressure you too much, but I mean, it's a pretty good show. Yeah, and... yeah probably should watch it, though. But uh, how about the heart of this episode? You know, we're seeing a bit of a softer side to Fat Tony. Uh, he's developing a bit of a bond for young Margaret here. What do you guys think of the heart? I didn't write down any heart moments. No. So I think apparently I, was, I thought nothing. Yeah, I, I, I think every single line that I think I've written down here, which is a sum total of about eight or nine notes, is just <laughs> the things that I did find funny. Because mm-hmm. I was looking for the things that can... There, I did have a few laugh out loud moments in this episode, but as far as the heart is concerned... No, and they're barely even going for it themselves, really. Yeah, I think the yeah. problem is they never really get into why. Like, Fat Tony does canonically have a son. And mm. the idea that... Uh, the only thing he ever really says is, oh, you're very cute and pure in this world. But there's never really a sense that he felt like he was already lacking that. He kind of dives head first into the idea of being Godfather immediately. And then there's not... Like, I don't really know why... Yeah. yeah, he like he saves the piano from falling on Homer and Maggie, and yeah. then like Homer briefly mentions the Godfather thing, and then Fat Tommy intimidates his way into the job. It's yeah, not like he was like, 
oh, I just saw the look in that baby's face and it was nice to save someone for once or something. Like, mm. Yeah, there could have even been a thing of like, he's forgotten that the term godfather isn't a mafia term and it's actually mm. a thing you do with people you're close with. That could have been a thing. Or even just have a, have a line about how, oh, uh, you know, Michael now lives with his mother in, you know, LA and I never see him and I'm kind of missing that for my yeah. life or something. Yeah. Or if, like, yeah. he was in the middle of some sort of crime that Homer and Maggie got in the middle of and he has to yeah. save Maggie, like, through that. And then he's like, oh, I actually... I enjoyed that. That was actually, that made me feel good. Let's explore that. Yeah, yeah there's so many ways to just like, and it takes two seconds to like yeah. <laughs> course correct so much of this shit. Yeah. But ultimately, did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Are these the characters we know and love? Is this a show we know and love? I mean, it needs some refinement, but I don't think anyone's off brand or anything. I mean, Fat Tony just, it needs a, just a bit more explanation, but uh, yeah. I was thinking about you asking this question. I thought there's a nice way to revisit it, which is when you ask that question, I have to say, does it feel like the new Simpsons? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> does it feel yeah. like the way they've kind of built them up in the, like, here you go. I'll, I'll use up one of my other notes as well. One of my favorite lines comes from Homer and it made me laugh, but I'm not quite sure if classic Homer would say it. And mm-hmm. it's the, where he says, um, well, you can sleep well knowing current religion thought that is that Maggie won't go to hell. Although that's always up for debate. And he Mm. says it like very blank and very bland and very kind of Mm. dead straight. And it's a funny line. I just don't know if that would come from Homer. I don't know. It's like along the lines where he's like weirdly reassured by like horrible things. Like when he goes to Bart, why you could wake up dead tomorrow. (laughs) Yes. It does feel like (laughs) absent, but if it gives him like comfort, like that's sort of fine in its own fucked up way. Yeah. It feels yeah, like, really on the pulse of, like, current political, like, mm. talk, though, which feels a bit off from home. Like, I didn't mind it. It was funny. Um, mm. And I like that it, like, doesn't reassure Marge whatsoever. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. Now I'm now laughing at you could wake up dead tomorrow line, and that's hilarious. <laughs> as far as feeling like Simpsons, like, thinking back to, like, Fat Tony episodes that, like, uh, you mentioned Cape Fear before, you mm. know, when Sideshow Bob enters The Simpsons, like, he has that Cape Fear soundtrack backing him, and it, it has a yep. certain mood over it. Same with the mm. Fat Tony episodes, where they do, like, a kind of homage music to Godfather or just yeah. mafia esque sort of soundtrack. And yeah, this one was just absent of any mood around that. Was, was there any music at all there, in this episode? No, it's a constant complaint of ours that 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 they took away the what do you call it, the live orchestra, yeah. live orchestra, just the lack of transitional music or anything like that, establishing scenes with yeah, a little bit mm. of a sound flourish. Yeah, none of that exists, yeah. and like and it really drops the pacing and. Yeah, they're farming the music out to Hans Zimmer's company. You think out of any fucking company to be able to handle a bit of transitional music for the show is Hans Zimmer's company. Like That's wild. And I would say that is a bigger part of why Simpsons doesn't feel like The Simpsons than people would give it credit for. Mm. Yeah, oh, absolutely. That, that music is so... Even just the small little five-second transitional pieces mm. are so iconic to the show. Even the the Fat Tony, the um the Mafia music, uh, that yeah. would always come on. Oh, yeah. Shame. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just getting into hating it. Like, at the time, just going through it, it was just a bit blare, but like, the more we pick at it, the more I fucking hate this thing. Welcome to the <laughs> Simpsons Index. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> the more we get into it. All right. Well, I mean, let's get into it. Uh, BT, what would you like to change about this one? I mean, I like like we so often do in these episodes, I feel like we've kind of already covered it. Um, give Fat Tony more of a reason to get into this to begin with, and even getting mm. out of it. So they're at this ice skating thing and, uh, you know, he's sitting with Maggie kind of next to him and he eventually puts him up on, a la- on his lap. And I'm like, OK, so someone's going to take a shot at Fat Tony and there's going to be a moment of, you know, oh, it could have hit Maggie. I'm in too yeah. dangerous a life to be in her life. That kind of thing. But no, it becomes like he has to start hitting a dude and then Maggie's all upset because he's pistol whipping some guy, Johnny Tightlips. And it's like. Eh, I, I like the other one. I like the thing I thought you were going to do better, where it's not that, you know, he sees a problem with her growing up like him. It's more he's a risk to her by pure nature of who he is. Yeah. And it sort of doesn't make sense with the whole Maggie, like, adopting his mannerisms and things like that, yeah. that she'd find this uh, upsetting. Like, it, I mean, yeah. it's what the episode was going for. It's just yeah, yeah. part of the inconsistencies. What do you reckon, Sean? What would you change about this one? I kind of want to do a complete rewrite. Yeah. <laughs> I think what I would what I 
would love to do is I want to see if there's a way to introduce the heart into this episode, right? Just a way to make me yeah. care about it a little more. Or the way for the Simpson family to to care and have a, a switch that that earns them the right to then go against Fat Tony. And I think one way that you can do that is have the more that Fat Tony is around Maggie and around the family, because Maggie's innocent. Maggie has no idea what's going on. You don't need to have her change, but have Bart or Lisa slowly Mm. getting influenced by being kind of more in the life of the mafia and get kind of enticed Mm. by that world. You don't need to go crazy, but it's not a far jump to see Bart get influenced in that way. And the more that happens, the more the parents go, oh, shit, this has some real-world ramifications. We're losing our kids, like all of them, not just Maggie, Mm. and that's what forces them to pull away, like raise the stakes a bit and give the parents like a reason to feel like afraid for having to pull away, not just for Maggie, but incorporate the other kids. Again, it's easy, just Fat Tony, wait, wait, who's their godfather? You know, uh, like, yeah. and then, yeah, he starts essentially taking over the family and what you were saying before, mm-hmm. BT, if they write off Michael with just a sentence and say, yeah. he's not here anymore, he's over there, like. Yeah, and then there's a sense of, you know, he's missing something in his own life and this is filling that void. Something, because it's already there. You just have to explain it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and I think there's something to the whole buying off Marge and Homer and giving them a better life. But yeah, of course, they're being taken away from Maggie and this is like a full-on person to be leaving them with. But there's so much other security that comes around it. But like, yeah, maybe they're threatened a bit. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm with you, Sean. This is just a total fucking tear down this one. It's just yeah. the bones are barely holding together. And the other thing is we've kind of done this episode in a couple of ways that this episode mm. already outlined. This is already where Mo was getting really attached to Maggie and hanging out yes. with her a lot and getting creepy. And also at the start where they were talking about with Flanders, like and mm. him asking if she was baptized. It was yeah. the whole fucking crux of the, the Bard episode. The episode yeah. where, yeah, they the kids went to live with the Flanders yeah, and the whole baptism. Baptized. Yeah. yeah. And Marge and Homer had no intention of baptizing them. Like, yeah, I know continuity Simpsons, rah, 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 but like, these feel like big things that you've established already, including, yeah, some of the key characters already having children. And yeah, like I've mm-hmm. mentioned before, if Selma was like getting involved in the story as well, it's like, I don't like where this is going. Maybe Fat Tony has a woman she thinks would be a better godmother as well anything yeah obviously like a big issue that you're going to run into no matter what is that the simpsons is 15 years past its expiration date like we that's that we know that yeah like that's fine but it you can't escape the fact that a lot of these episodes just feel like the writer's room go hey what if x character did this with the simpsons make yeah. an episode out of that pretty much and, and what's funny is that you get every single episode i would i would be interested to go back to all the episodes from the last couple of seasons and see like has this episode been done better 20 years ago yeah. like have they done this episode before because surely they have in a lot of respects yeah. yeah no there's a lot of pieces from a lot of episodes I mean, there's one part that I liked where Maggie, like, knows she can run the playground now, but I think mm-hmm. it went too quickly into full-blown, yeah, mafia parody, making them control. kiss the yeah. pacifier. Like, yeah. it's just too rushed, which is weird because this episode had time up its sleeve. It's just... Yeah, it's all a story. No yeah. I, I will say that the classic part of The Simpsons that I did like, that they didn't go fully into as the, in the way they could, is that I love a good classic Simpsons dream sequence. Mm-hmm. Love that. Whenever you get them, like the weird kind of like zany, visually delightful dream sequences. Great. I'm all there for that. And they started off with it and then it kind of just went into the, it was fine. I enjoyed it. It was a nice little classic bit. Yeah. Uh, Bart's like, I'm here too. And Millhouse is on my back. No, I'm the front. And that just went fucking yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's when they stopped. But <laughs> I like that hell was an, an Arby's ball pit. Yeah. He's like, She's going to play for eternity in an unsanitary ball pit. Yeah. That was enough. That's cute. But yeah, the other fantasy sequence later where Marge is imagining Maggie as an adult and she just set someone on fire. It's so quick. And I was like, oh, what just happened? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. I think we're here. It's time for everyone's final notes. And now it's time. And now it's time for our final notes. Everyone's final notes. Sean, do you have final notes? Oh, you know what? There's just a bit of comic timing that I, I, I love the way it was delivered. It was quick. It was snappy. But as soon as Homer's going and he, he's been instructed by Marge that he needs to find the Godfather. And so mm. he goes into um, Mo's Tavern and the first person he hears from is Lenny. And what does Lenny do? Like, oh, you can have some, just give us some beer. And sharp as attack, he goes, 
Okay, you're out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it was just delivered so dryly and perfectly. I was like, great, yeah. awesome. Uh, the visual gag that I loved is just uh, they've gotten the new car from Tony. And so Homer asked for them to stop in the middle of the road so they can do the door swinging up again. Mm. But does it? Homer goes to do it, just cracks him in the face. And that, that elicited a, a chuckle from me. Mm. I didn't mind later as well where Marge is like, let me just do the door one more time and it smacks Mormon yeah. outside the yeah. uh, theater. Yeah. Man, more man's dead. Um, <laughs> so many times over. Oh, yeah. the, my final note. My final note is uh, final when note. who is it? Legs? No, not legs. Who's the other one? Louis. 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 When Louis uh, nudges Homer awake at the church, and he goes, "But, but even the priest is asleep." And then it yeah. cuts to the priest <laughs> asleep. I was like, "Great, awesome." <laughs> And those are the things I found funny about this episode, and that's it. BT, what about you? Have you got any final notes? Yeah, uh, look, I think I have a surprising number of positives. Uh, there's a bit where Flanders says, oh, can I have my Allen wrench back? And Homer's like, ha, Flanders names his tools. Yeah, I like uh, that. That was all right. Yeah. It was a dumb moment of Wigan being like, oh, I did okay with Ralphie, but it was one of my notes of whackness of Ralph eating the bill, and then it just kind of comes as confetti out his nose. I didn't like it, but it was a whack moment, and I didn't hate it either. It was whatever yeah, yeah it was um, whatever it, it doesn't i don't like it because i don't like fat tony muscling his way into the being godfather but that said when he's all like but you offered me a godfather a minute ago and then a guy in an fbi van is like yeah i got it on tape uh the idea they're using that as like their backup recording yeah no, that was fine no, i didn't hmm. mind that the car features a gps that isn't so judgy it's like sure let's try it your way I'm like okay way. that's nice the number of times like gps don't send me no i'm gonna go this way it's like recalculating again yeah mm-hmm. yeah i know i've bitched this to you a million times beach but i wish on a gps you could like set a circle of like don't start the instructions like while i'm in this perimeter i know yeah. where i'm going this part i know where i am yeah this part i don't <laughs> Especially, uh, uh, I live near an East Street and a North Street. And at one point, my GPS, if I'm yeah, setting directions, I go, turn left on East Street and then head north towards North Street. And then turn <laughs> on North and my, oh my God, just like the, my GPS thinks I even go by the compass anyway. Yeah, like, no one does. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the there's a sextant yeah. being like, yes, do East indeed. Mm. Uh, let's see. All right. He mentions, uh, St. Vino of Verona. And so I looked this up. It is, he says it's, um, the saint of children trying to talk. It turns out that is correct. Uh, Zeno is the patron saint of fishermen, anglers, the city of Verona, newborn babies, as well as children learning to speak and walk. Uh, and Ellen would fact, know this. Yeah. Yeah. Fun <laughs> fact. According to legend, he was stolen at birth and briefly replaced by a demonic changeling. Lovely. I want to watch that movie. Uh, yeah. I was wondering a part way through. It's like, oh, should have I invited Ellen to this one as well? This seems very. <laughs> Man, I, I I put the I brought the wrong role to caster. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Second, we get you on the yeah. Homer and Marge wilderness episode. Her on this and Diana something else. Something else. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> She was saying, actually, the latest Treehouse of Horror was a banger as well. I need to check that out. Oh. I, I did check out the Not It and the other... Yeah, I wasn't a fan of the... Uh, Sean, they did, like, an entire episode parody of the latest It movie. Why? It, thank you. <laughs> that, that is my one-word <laughs> review as well. Did you say that Ellen watched the latest Treehouse of Horror? Oh, no, Diana did. Sorry. Oh, okay. I was like, why is Ellen watching Simpsons? (laughs) (laughs) She uses my Disney Plus account. I see (laughs) y'all. When Fat Tony's like, dispose of this diaper. I don't care how and I don't care where. I do appreciate that. They tie a cinder block around it, throw it in a pit and then shoot it three times. Yeah. Didn't care for the reprise though. No. Why is that the post credit sequence? Yeah. I didn't so care for the button added on with like, ah, oh, you can never forget that smell. It's like, no, no, it was enough. Like the shooting it got me and I laughed at yeah. that and mm. that was enough to end it. But yeah, and then the post credits with, oh, I'm going to report to HR. You mean Harry the Rat? He's buried over there. End episode. Ah, mm. remember, that, remember that gag that we cut for time? Let's put it back in in the credits. <laughs> ah, so much of the post credits is bad now. I mean, it always was. Whatever. Um, and one bit, I I mean, they just had to throw it in of uh, take the gun, leave the Zamboni instead of co- colo- colo- you know, What's the word? Cannoli? The other, cannoli. I'm like, cannoli? No. I'm like, no, that's not what it is. <laughs> cannoli? Bologna? Cannoli. Cannoli uh, from Godfather. This episode has a weird relationship with the Godfather movie because it wants to keep referencing it, but there's no plot tie through. It's just occasional visual references and lines, and it's just. Yeah, and they do the same I haven't seen that movie joke. They did it with Fat Tony, and then they did it with yeah. Marge. It's like, oh, I watched the wedding bit. That character that's bad is so good. Like, 
Yeah. yeah. You can't have two bites uh, of this one. Oh, they bit. They bit again. <laughs> they it bit. bites in They certainly bit. Yeah, I only have a couple of other notes. I liked Maggie playing with the cat, like throwing little litter balls at it. It was disgusting and great. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 babies and cats for you. Yeah. Uh, Grandpa's little rant was almost there. Like, it was almost like a good grandpa rant. I... Didn't mind the whole, oh, good thing I took my anti-rambling medications. I remember when they first kicked in, just then. Like, if that stopped there, but they just, oh, they yeah. kept going. Like, yes, they just got to Yeah, that is all my notes, actually. Oh, why was it an itchy and scratchy on ice thing? And why was this a deal sweetener for Homer? Why would he get, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. It's time to rank this thing. <laughs> on the Simpsons Index, we rank using a six-point scale, which starts down the bottom at failure. Maybe if the episode was just, eh. You give it a participant, but for the positive rankings, you got OK Bronze, Good Silver, Excellent Gold, but for the best of the very best, you give Cubic Zirconi R. I'm going to go first. Let me show you how it's done. Uh, look, it's almost down in the pit of failure, but ultimately, I don't care about this one. It's it's flimsy and inconsistent. A couple of good gags, but like mm-hmm. all in all, just a boring experience that I'll hopefully forget. Uh, to watch it again will be an offer I can refuse. BT, what are you ranking? At? Hey, uh, I'm also going to participant. Yeah, let's, I'm mostly going to forget it. And even though it's got its problems, I feel like there's enough jokes to pull it through. I just I don't feel anything. I don't feel enough for it to hate it. So participant. And Sean, finish this off, please. Yeah, look, it's not offensive, and I I don't know if this is canonically what I've done in the past, but I feel like my failures would be reserved for like egregiously aggressively offensive and like bad episodes and i don't mm. think this is that it's just not trying and when yeah. it thinks it's trying it's being lazy um mm. it's just like there are a few chuckle worthy moments but other than that it feels very much like the episode i thought it was going to be and it is a participant <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you for helping us review that today sean mm. but before we get out of here uh, why don't you tell the people what you're up to at the moment? Oh, also, just sorry, because I, I just yeah, miss yeah. your uh, own format. What's, um, what other season 33s have had, like, how have other season uh, 33 yeah. episodes uh, ranked? So we have kind of cut this bit a little Aww. bit because we keep, well, hang on, because we keep going, it'll join other ones such as, I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't remember that. Does anyone remember what happened in this one? <laughs> well, disregard me asking then. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll just quickly bring it up. Um, I'm just curious if you've had like how many good, like positively ranked episodes you've had from like these seasons. Like, um, 33, I think, has been doing okay ish. Yeah, like it's definitely an improvement, but like not much it's not the revolution that a lot of people are claiming it is mm. um we actually reviewed a season 33 episode with uh chris your fellow world caster portrait of a lackey on fire where smithers gets in a new relationship and turns out the guy's yeah. like working for fast fashion and he's like very questionable morally oh. um, we it was a bronze but we enjoyed it yeah season 34 is uh, faring a bit better but like we've only reviewed five and three episodes from them respectively so like Oof. we, we mm. don't have enough data yet but like yeah the poll is not in yet the poll yeah, numbers aren't in this spreadsheet yeah we're talking about a rise from like an average dull participant to a shiny participant here okay. the, <laughs> the show's not turning around <laughs> Well, I, I won't be watching unless you invite me on the episode. There <laughs> no, you go. I That's mean, th- do check out that Homer and Marge in the Wilderness episode. Yes. I, I did find mm. that one quite affecting. When I saw it, I did like, kind of like pin that. I was like, I do want to see, because that felt more like, not a, not a return to like, but mm. just like a bit more of an homage to what used to be. Yeah. yeah, And like, not so high concept, more of a, a, a broad swing. Like they're not doing their usual thing on this one. It, yeah. It works. Um, sorry, it, to answer your question that you asked me and then I just refused to answer, apparently. <laughs> a bit about me. So, hello, everyone. I'm Sean. I'm from Roll to Cast. That is R O L E. We're a tabletop role playing game podcast that plays a different game every season that is not D&D. Different world, different GM, different story, original music by frequenter of the show, Paul Goodman, has been a musician for us, as has a, a slew of other people. Uh, we've just finished our Starfinder campaign, which was season eight. Uh, which I ran, and we've announced what season nine is, so I can do so here as well. It is Ooh. called Die, oh. D-I-E, the Die RPG, which is also a comic series by Kieran Kieran Gillen. I hope I've got that right. Uh, but essentially, it's a as close to D&D as we've gotten, mm-hmm. but it, it, the easiest way to describe it is goth Jumanji. Uh, <laughs> the best way to describe it. Oh, that's right. So we'll be starting that next week. When does this drop? 
Probably tomorrow. <laughs> okay, next week is when we start that season. So feel free if you want to check us out, if you're into role-playing games or if you're into me, roll to cast R-O-L-E on all good podcatchers. Yeah, absolutely. And Sean and I have also joined up with a few other people. Uh, oh, yes, of course. Yes, you do this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you're every Thursday, uh, most Thursdays at the moment, we'll be role-playing live on twitch.tv slash dreadedgm. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll put links to all this in the show notes by the way Mm -hmm. but we're playing a call of cthulhu campaign and uh, set in the 1920s yeah horror on the orient express which is one of the most famous popular call of cthulhu campaigns that uh, i'm pretty sure all of us know nothing about so yeah we're coming in blind and i play a a 75 year old old man that is (laughs) gonna die i'm sure that's cthulhu (laughs) and i play a 55 year old heavy smoker professional driver that i just make sure everybody knows at all times that he just stinks <laughs> he absolutely stinks and we've left him on a cliffhanger yeah uh, Ooh, for the next episode nice. yeah and so far like yeah it's so weird we're in this entourage with a young actress a young acrobat and just these two old people for some reason yeah, just <laughs> two old guys and two young women just hang- hey, hey these young folk gotta get driven around by somebody mm. yeah but yeah. no, we're having a lot of fun there. So that's uh, Thursdays, generally 7 p.m. AEST time. Again, put links in the show notes for all this, twitch.tv slash dreaded GM. But BT, what else are we up to? Well, let me make you an offer you can't refuse, or you can if you feel like it. <laughs> you can go to patreon.com slash sidequeststudios, and that is the blanket for everything we do. I'm going to do this quick because we've been plugging for you for a while now. <laughs> um, and basically, if you want to check out everything we do and more, we, you can get access to over 100 exclusive podcasts. We can he- You can hear my thoughts on all the episodes we- I missed out on, or you can listen to us discuss movies that star the cast of The Simpsons, but not as The Simpsons. Curious. Ooh, yeah. sounds interesting. Enticing. Indeed. And for as little as $5 a month. Yeah, <laughs> price of a cup of coffee a month. One of the perks is you get to suggest a movie for us to review, as long as it stars one of the Simpsons. And yeah, I know we don't always release weekly on the Index free feed, but you do get a bonus podcast every single week over at the Patreon. Yeah, we are making sure you're getting that, you know, and your money's quality. worth. Yeah, for your moolah. Yeah, and we've got a lot of shows, a lot of Simpsons-focused content, so that's patreon.com slash sidequeststudios. Also, while you're at Patreon, go hit up patreon.com slash rolltocast. You guys are doing lots of fun stuff over there. Yeah, build up a really great community of people Mm. following you there. And um, We've got our our live shows are on the uh, Patreon soon as well. We're getting those ready to to go. Oh, wonderful. I forgot you filmed those. Sweet. Yeah, Yeah. we, 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 we filmed three of them, and we retained the audio for one of them through some technical snafus unfortunately one of them wasn't quiet but yeah we're looking to release those uh on one of our tiers as well for for access to nice well the ones the me and beige came down for is that on video it will be yes and nice. that is that you is can the watch one... us send drinks to chris and get him real <laughs> fucked up oh yeah <laughs> it was a good time so much fun that was also cool with cthulhu yeah oh yeah true so yeah, uh, patreon.com slash sidequest studios, patreon.com slash roll to cast. Uh, like, subscribe, love you all for listening. Uh, mm. Is that how you plug shit? I think we're good. Yeah. Sean, once again, thank you very much for doing this with us tonight. Yeah, it was an absolute treat. No, thank you, man. Absolutely. Anytime you guys want. Hey, this was like a day's notice. I'm here, man. Like anytime. <laughs> it's, a, it's a blast. Appreciate anytime it. to hate watch and also sometimes love watch <laughs> The Simpsons. I hope I sometimes. can find one that's at least tolerable mm. for you. <laughs> 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 tolerable is what we're aiming for. We did Lisa's wedding. Uh, that's, that, that was my good one. Yep. yep. Ray Mysterio's favorite episode. Yeah. <laughs> Season six, episode 19. Anyway, uh, BT, thank you as always. <laughs> Yeah, cool, whatever. (laughs) I've been your host, (laughs) Elliot J. O'Neill. That's all the mustard in the house. Thank you for listening to the Simpsons Index podcast, which is also an online spreadsheet available at thesimpsonsindex.com. You can also check out our other shows, like Pulp Fury Radio, our scripted fiction podcast, which tells all original stories across a range of pulp genres, and Thrones of Game, where we review Game of Thrones in reverse order. Links to those podcasts and more will be available in the show notes. Now there's no bonus scenes for this episode, so we'll catch you next week.